Five foot two, six foot, that says it all. Look at the reach, 64, 69, as in the previous semi-final. You've got to look at one of the Brooks sisters and say, she's got to get in there, she's got to get inside. She is up against it. Absolutely, she's up against a lot of numbers. Can she overcome not only size, reach, but experience? We're going to see here for Emily. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout scheduled for five two-minute rounds and is sanctioned by the ISK. Timekeeper at the bell, Barry Delaney, and the third man in the ring in charge of the action, referee Tim Isley. And the three judges scoring, Troy Hullahan, Connor Doyle, and Jack Johal. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing to you first, being out of the blue corner, she's wearing the white and silver. Her official weight of 138 pounds. She is currently undefeated with one win. Hailing from Portsmouth, England, United Kingdom, Emily Her opponent across the ring fighting out of the red corner. She's wearing the black and green. Her official weight of 139 pounds. She is undefeated with one win. Hailing from Melbourne, Australia. Ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, Barbie! Wade, the two of them drawn together, they've said everything we need to. We don't need to set it up anymore. That picture told all the words you need. David and Goliath. Can Emily Brooke overcome what is figuratively and literally a mountain in front of her? Potentially, potentially five two-minute rounds for the right to meet Julie Poker in that final. She's looking to set up a big right hand. You can see it. I mean, it's it's telegraphed, but it's there, Malcolm. Look at Emily just waiting to tee off with that right hand. Oh, but she gets caught with some big ones. Oh, immediately. The oh, big shots for Barbie. She's swinging for the absolute bleachers here. The only thing in Emily's favor is when they're close, she knows where the head of her taller opponent's going to be. Yeah. And again, being a taller opponent, yes, we've talked about the benefits. Look at the body work there for Barbie. Oh, she's catching and forcing Emily back now. And Emily's swinging for the rafters, but she's getting caught regularly. Yeah. Now listen, as, as many advantages as Barbie has in this fight, as a taller fighter, your chin is higher, and if that distance is closed, and, and sometimes, unbeknownst to you, you may be the one doing it, that chin is there to be cracked. And that right hand is coming out, like you said, from Emily looking for that chin. Well, she knows, although we've talked about the, the ability of Barbie, she's still a novice. She's still only had one bout. She's only had the one bout. So her head movement and her head protection, as you mentioned, won't be there like a more seasoned veteran. But those sort of shots will be that are forcing Emily back. Yeah, listen, Barbie's got a long jab. She knows how to use it. And I do want to see that right hand come out straight from her. I think it's something that definitely can get through the guard at this point. Throwing the overhand is not using her, her ability, her, her actual natural abilities and strengths. So let's see that right hand straight down the pipe from Barbie after that jab. Because that right there is the reason why. You throw looping shots, straight shots, beat it. But here she comes again, teeing. Oh, and she's been caught four or five times, Emily. Gutsy performance here. Oh, oh, oh she's caught. Play. She's oh, right hand. She's, she's struggling Stop that boxing. way. Yeah. She really she is boxing. struggling now. Getting hit with some big ones right now, and Barbie is just eating up that space. And you see a big, deep breath there from Emily. I'm worried about the cardio when you sit down and throw big power shots. And we don't talk about this enough, Malcolm. When you're throwing big power shots against bigger opponents, and they just don't wear it. That takes so much out of you. Because she knows where her head is, because otherwise there's going to be a lot more of what we saw in the, ra in the opening round. Absolutely. 
And don't forget, Barbie actually got technically better as the back went on. Malcolm, watch close here. The Barbie is starting to range fine with that jab. And off the back foot, she's looking to cock that right hand. Look at that head movement. Cock that right hand back and just wait for Emily to walk into one right here. You see her trying to measure it. She's waiting to sit down on that right hand. Well, that's what happened. I felt she, her punches got tighter, her guard, I and the defense got tighter as the bat went on, as she worked her way into it. And again, the, the puzzle has to be solved here from Emily. That's the, the burden of being the shorter fighter. As you're taller, you don't really have to do a lot, right? You're the one that makes someone solve the puzzle. You are the puzzle. And she's catching Emily again. Yeah, every single time that jab is... is Straightening Emily out, and then the right hand comes behind it. And Emily, those eyes are wide. She's here for the fight, but it's still just such an uphill battle for someone. Wait, these Brooks sisters are tough. Absolutely. They are tough. Tough as nails. There for the fight. She's swinging heavy leather right now. It's just Barbie's not affected at all. Oh, right hand. That one got through. That's the opportunity. That's the only opportunity. And Emily it's calls so her on. Love it. I love it. So. I love it. But again, it's almost you have to bait her into that fight because if, if you're Emily at range, it's going to be this. It's going to be rights and lefts, right on your nose. But if you can bait her into a war, I bring that right over the top. Yeah. Big right hand there again. And there was an uppercut from Barbie. She's beginning to bring that technique in now, right? She's beginning to find her way into the back as she did last time. And I'm just taking a look off of ringside here, Malcolm. I just saw the team, and now I'm looking at the fighter, Boca, just walked back out here. She's sitting ringside to get a close bird's eye view at this matchup and who her finals opponent's going to be. Oh, the right hand from Emily's landing twice. It hasn't affected her. You can catch the bigger fighter overextending, get under those shots, find your way to range naturally, and then throw the big one. That's where the success will happen. Key midway point in this bag, and Emily is still there, and she's still looking for that big overhand right. And I like the way she set up before she had beautiful upper body movement yeah, yeah. to slip and throw the right. But these exchanges right there, that she's not going to win these. No, it's too, it's too, she's way too far out of range. You can't even worry about exchanging here. You have to use, we talked about it in the L fight, you have to use angles. You have to find a way to get your head off center when that jab comes down the pipe. And then, naturally, the forward movement of Barbie will allow you to throw that big right hand. But as of now, Barbie's doing a great job of keeping her range with her jab. And then again, letting off power shots at her range. Just like that with the jab again. She steps in, steps out. And not allowing Emily the opportunity for those overhand. That's why he's got to try and do that little slip and fight. The problem is now Barbie's seen it multiple times. So you have to find more variety. Double jab right hand, angle switch right hand, clinch right hand, something. Well, the crowd are responding to her. There's a little, There's a little part of the crowd just beginning close. to start looking and going, do you know what? What a gutsy girl. They're getting behind her slightly. Well, she's getting close too, Malcolm. Right? Every shot, she throws that right hand that, let's be honest, sometimes Barbie's not keeping her range well. That's the one that gets the closest, and that's the one the crowd sees. But when she throws the jab like that, she makes the job easy for herself. Yeah, if she stays there, and even here at the clinch, she's looking to let shots go a little bit. But when she makes life easy and keeps her jab and her right hand straight down the pipe, this is this has been her fight. And again, the jab, it's a good, strong, solid jab. Yeah. And again, she's looking to time it. She wants the right hand. She wants to walk into the onto one. Like she's just waiting for that right moment, man. Because it's there. Nice stiff jab again for Barbie and another one. Just boom. She can do that all day. The ultimate roll and throw was Mike Tyson against Absolutely. smaller opponents. Well, I'm, not saying, I'm not saying Emily has to be of that ability. But the point hey. is, you roll and throw against that taller opponent. You don't stand and trade looking to hope to get the right hand. Not at all. You have to be able to, and, and Barbie got a little upset with the little collar tie there in the clinch. Um, yeah, you can't just stand in the center and hope and you're just throwing and, and no head movement that that right hand's gonna land. That's where she's getting caught again. Yeah. And Barbie keeps a pretty decent stance here. Not really over aggressive, just allowing Emily to come forward and again, use these exchanges to throw head movement. I want to see Barbie throw something straight, throw it down the pipe because it'll be so much more effective. The left is, the right's not. 
Well, what she does do nicely, though, is she steps back nicely as yeah, well. Absolutely. Just out of range to go again. But I agree with you. The left is nice and straight. If the right was nice and straight, it'd be devastating. Throw that two. Throw that right hand down the pipe. Because, again, Emily is walking into it. When she throws her jab to the body right hand, she slides her body toward that big power hand. All Barbie has to do is sit down on the shot, move her head, and throw it straight down. The first female boxer tonight, a couple of steps back there to step off the line on the angle to catch Emily. She stepped off the line there, and it worked for her as well. It, it's almost like she's not thinking about it in certain exchanges. Obviously, we're, you know, we're not seeing Clarissa Seals out there, but we are seeing Barbie do some things that are technically a little bit higher level than we've seen from other boxers in the female division. Oh, and she's able to get caught cool, okay, again. And she's able to attack off of it. Oh, left hook gets through. Right hand as well. She's under pressure that way. Emily is under real pressure. Oh, she, she, she smells blood. She smells blood now, Barbie. And there's not, in our division, there's not a better finisher. There's not someone that can capitalize more than Barbie. She tried to uppercut. That was a big uppercut. Last few seconds here, Barbie just being patient. That has to change here in this last round for Emily if she's going to overcome again this mount of a challenge. Round five, final round. You've got to credit Emily for still being there. Absolutely. I mean, fifth round, and she's still looking for that big right. And that's all she can I mean, listen, if we're being realistic, that's what she can do at this moment. We've seen the technique, we've seen the ability of Emily. And what she has in the tank is a big right hand. It's the most lethal weapon. It's what she, at this point, you have to keep throwing it. It's got to land on the button as well. Yeah. It's got to land on that point of the chin that instantly sends you to sleep for your own protection. It's got to land sweetly. Of course. And for Barbie, you, I mean, listen, I know Barbie's not this type of fighter, but as long as she is, she could coast this round on her jab. I thought exactly the same way. There's no need to take risks now. Yeah. But this is the final. But then again, Mount, you look at that face, does that look like a, a girl that doesn't like taking risks? <laughs> no, you're... Oh, the big right in retaliation as Emily tries again. Oh, left hook. But the problem for Emily is just like poking the bear, isn't it? Yep. You poke the bear and it comes flying back at you. At this point, yeah, you, you got to be a bear hunter though, right? You poke that bear, you got to know it's coming back, but that, that opens up opportunity for Emily in the most dangerous... What do they say? When a hurricane is, is swirling, the most safe place to be is in the right center. In the middle. Yeah. Right in the middle. Emily has to get there. Last 45 seconds, I mean, if we're, if we're being honest here, it's going to be a stoppage from, from Emily if she's going to win this fight. And it's a literal, literal tall order. Yeah. It's simple as that. Yeah. And like we said, Barbie just doing a good job of staying patient here, right? Working her jab, taking that on the shoulder. Her jab's the best asset. It really is. Quadruple, five, six, seven. <laughs> that's all she needs. I mean, listen, that's, again, it's the easiest thing to do for a taller fighter, but it's the hardest thing to do to, to, to be consistent with because you love getting into these exchanges. Barbie, oh, oh he's a heavy, heavy shot. Her last 10 seconds, Emily Brook, what a warrior. Oh, another one. She's eating leather Woo. now. Oh! At the end of the round there, Barbie sneaks one through, but man. Ladies and gentlemen, after five rounds of boxing, we go to the judges' scorecards. Two judges scored about 50 to 45, and Judge C scores about 49 to 46. And your winner by unanimous decision. Barbie! I am here with your winner, Barbie. Talk to me, listen. That was a tough fight. Emily was there for it. She wasn't taking a back step. She tried to bring the fight to you. Ultimately, you got it done. What made the difference for you? Uh, just lots of sparring, really. But, um, yeah, I definitely want to be better than next time. Listen, nothing to hang your head on at all. That was a magnificent performance. And I want to know what it meant to not only win the first round, but now with a lot of expectations coming out of it, to come back and win with a lot of pressure on your shoulders. I mean, it's a relief. Like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not used to ever getting, like, that kind of praise for something I've done. So I was like, ah! But... Um, I'm glad I lived up, hopefully, to some of your expectations, and I'll do better next time. Well, expect a lot of praise after that performance because you're headed to the finals, and your opponent is right here behind you, so here, let's do this. 
just quickly, let's take a look at our finals matchup. We have Julie Polka and Barbie. Let me get that face to face here. right there ladies and gentlemen is one to keep your eyes on your king pin finals julie polka versus barbie a true clash of the titans as we conclude the king pin semi-finals in the women's bracket julie polka will meet barbie in the finals